said to have been the originators, Bandler and uh, John Bandler. Grinder. John Grinder and Richard Bandler, I guess. Yeah. Um, they, they, I think they acknowledged Krzyzewski or in some regard in, in their first books. Um, but then, you know, it was always confusing to me that they also mentioned that the great influence of Noam Chomsky. And I never was able to see how, you know, what I would call Platonist like Chomsky um, would, how, how you could combine Krzyzewski and Chomsky and make anything that makes sense. <laughs> but that's, that's my particular take on it. But, you know, they've developed some interesting stuff and, um, you know, that's, I'm, again, I'm just not really sure that Krzyzewski has had a hell of a lot of influence, but they do talk a lot about the map is not the territory, which was a phrase that Krzyzewski came up with. Now, how did you become, how did you hear of Krzyzewski and how did you come to devote much of your life to him? <laughs> oh my. Well, I, I was a, probably 13 or 14 years old back in the 60s, early 60s. And my mother got a magazine, a woman's magazine called Family Circle. And there was one issue where they had a list of interesting books for young people. And there were all kinds of stuff in there that I delved into subsequently after seeing that list. I wish I had that family circle issue now because I would uh, be interested in seeing the list again. But anyhow, there was a book on the list called The Tyranny of Words by Stuart Chase, which was written and published in 1938. And so I went to the public library in the town I was living in in Pennsylvania, Mount Lebanon, and they had the book, The Tyranny of Words. I read that book, and Chase wasn't really much of a serious student of Krzyzewski. He was more like a journalist who had done a little bit of study. Um, and he was interested not only in Krzyzewski, but a lot of other people who were working in similar ways. And Chase, who had, uh, I guess his background was in economics, and he was involved with social issues. He was a social, more or less a socialist, at, at least at one time. Um, he was uh, interested in writing, and he had decided, according to what he says in, in that book, to examine his tools, the language, basically. So he had some, some exposure to Krzyzewski, and the two met at some point. Um, Krzyzewski, at that time, the Institute had not yet been founded when the Chase was writing that, so Krzyzewski, they must have met some other way. <clears throat> Anyhow, Chase wrote this book, and he described Krzyzewski and some of the things that uh, Krzyzewski had uh, developed and written about. And of all the people he wrote about, and there were other people like Ogden and Richards and uh, P.W. Bridgman, who had written various things about language and scientific methods and whatnot. So that book included those people who were also very interesting and uh I've explored some of their work, too. But the thing that really grabbed me was his description of Krzyzewski. And so I started to pursue that and do more reading. And eventually got to Krzyzewski in a few years. I don't know exactly when, but it was just a few years. I, got, uh, I ordered Krzyzewski's book or books and read those. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, I started, I sort of took off on a run from there. For the next, uh, pretty much in the early 70s, I was very interested and probably read more general semantics stuff than anything. Uh, there are a lot of books that have been written, both very wretched books and very good books. Um, and I read pretty much everything I could get my hands on when I was going to the University of Pittsburgh in the early 70s. Um, uh, I spent a lot of time in the library uh, when I should have been studying for my classes, I guess. And I managed to graduate. And uh, I kept my interest, and after doing various things 
in various places. I uh, joined the uh, the Institute of General Semantics and started getting stuff from them. They gave seminar workshops, two week long seminar workshops in Krzyzewski's General Semantics. And I finally went to the first one in 1979 and met the people there, some of, some of them, especially Charlotte Chouchard Reed, who was Krzyzewski, a close uh, co worker of Krzyzewski. And over the years, I just got very close with her um, and became a member of the seminar staff. I began teaching. There was a te- at one time there was a uh, teacher training uh, program that the institute had, and I did that so I could get my certificate, which only a few people have. And uh, and I just got involved in the more scholarly aspect because you know the institute, even though he he had a lot of Krzyzewski had a lot of students in academia in various fields, but there. His work developed outside of academia, and the unique thing about that organization was that it managed to survive and promote a stream of scholarship about Korzybski and his work that lasted until maybe 2002, 2004, something like that. And actually, you know, like a lot of organizations for various reasons, you know, somehow this organization has managed to survive for 73 years. This year is the 73rd anniversary of the founding of the Institute of General Semantics, but they pretty much lost the stream of teaching that was developed. Um, so, um, <laughs> okay, I sort of diverged from what I had been originally answering, but. Um, that's cool. Uh, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Are there any major ways in which uh, which there's a difference between what Korzybski was trying to achieve and what he ended up achieving? Oh, yeah. I think that um, I mean, there's a num- number of different levels that I can answer that question. Um, In terms of his his work, the systemization that he developed and the teaching methods, you know, once he studied with the, uh, once he had developed this basic theoretical framework and then various educational techniques, which are described in various of his books and writings, um, he decided that, you know, it wasn't enough for people to have theoretical understanding of some of these issues, although that's probably essential as a starting point. But at some point, people have got to develop different, a different kind of consciousness and different habits of consciousness and different ways of using language, different ways of directing themselves, and so forth and so on. So he began something that isn't really well known, but he put a tremendous emphasis on individual application of his methods. And sometimes it's very simple things, like just putting a date when you make a statement about something. Let's say that noise is loud, and you put a date on it. You can, it, it can make a difference. Yeah. Um, at any rate, he developed these methods, and he... He, he felt that it was he be, when he was lecturing, and he started to have individual meetings at some point fairly early on with his students, which he then offered in a formal way as part of the seminar uh, teaching. So those who wanted could write well, basically what they would do is write their autobi- a brief autobiographical statement of one or more pages, and then Krzyzewski would read those, and after the, it was. He developed that after, then at, at the end of his career, after the seminar, he would have sessions where of one or two hours with, with the individual students who had attended the, his lectures, and they would work on whatever the student wanted to work on in terms of applying these quote-unquote scientific methods to their own personal problems. 
and then he encouraged people to write to him and to 